Welcome to this Burning Earth tutorial on Earth Mole School. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the north. So in this tutorial, I want to take a look at winds relative to pressures and also this wind power density. So we're going to be getting a little bit into this quantity this time. And I fired up Earth Null School and I've found this nice cyclone here off of the southern Aleutian Islands out here, top of the Pacific Ocean. And I want to take a look at what happens to the winds as we go up in the atmosphere. So here you can see we have quite strong winds, 109k at the surface. And as we go up, just above the surface, we can see that the winds get a little bit stronger. If we step up a bit further to maybe where water freezes at, we can see the winds are getting a lot stronger. And then if we go up into the jet stream, we can start to see that we have even stronger winds in this area too. So there's this gradient of velocities as you go up from the surface. The winds are slower at the surface, and then in this region, when you're under the jet stream, they tend to go up as you get higher in the atmosphere. Another way of characterizing this is by looking at the wind power density, the WPD right here. So this is the instantaneous wind power density. And I'm going to swing back down here to 1000 and take a look at what's happening just above the surface. And just to note that for some reason in Earth Null School, they don't have wind power density at the surface, even though you can technically define it. So here over this cyclone, we can see that we have this 20 kilowatts per meter squared. And we'll get into this one in a little bit in the following part of the tutorial. So if we step up, we just want to kind of take a look at this number and we can see that as we step up, it starts to increase. Now we have this 22.5 kilowatts per meter squared. And if we step up into the jet stream, for example, we have 80.9 kilowatts per meter squared. And this is in various places you can look around. You can see over here we have 0 0.4 kilowatts per meter squared. So this instantaneous wind power density is related to the velocity that we see over here just on the ordinary wind, but it contains information about the amount of power that's in the wind or the amount of energy that's in the wind. So in order to explain this a little bit further, I've brought up this nice simple equations here which tell us exactly what this wind power density is. So the wind power density is the total amount of power that's delivered to a square meter of area. So you can imagine in this case the wind is coming towards the windmills here and there's some area of the windmills and some efficiency and the total amount of power impinging upon the windmill is the wind power density times the total area. And we can also see how power is related to energy, that power is uh, multiplying that power by time, you get energy over here in, in kilojoules or kilowatt hours, as it's sometimes uh, also another unit of energy. In that case, you would have kilowatts here times hours to get kilowatt hours. So I've labeled the units here of what these are. So kilowatts is power, meters squared is area, um, and kilojoules is energy, and seconds is time. So in order to further explore what's going on with velocity and wind power density, I've made this nice plot for you guys. And what I've done is I've gone to a specific place in Earth Null School, in this case in the North Pacific Ocean, and I've recorded the velocity going up in the atmosphere as you go up with altitude. And I've also gone and looked at the wind power density, and I have the corresponding wind power density values for these points on these points here. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and used the barometric equations in conjunction with some curve fitting to calculate out the wind power density according to some nice approximations for the troposphere, what we would expect in an ideal troposphere. And what we find is that the wind power density goes as the cube of the velocity times the density of the air going up in the atmosphere times this factor of one half. And what this really is, is this is just the total kinetic energy uh, density or kinetic energy per unit volume times the velocity in the wind. 
And in order to get the density here of the air going up in the atmosphere, we can use the ideal gas law from, from thermodynamics and find that it's a function of the pressure, which we also know, and the temperature going up in the atmosphere. So we have all of this information, and then we can calculate the instantaneous wind power density. And in this case, it's important to note that these blue dots only apply to this particular point in the North Pacific. If you chose something near the equator, for example, this might go up and drop off when you get to the high troposphere. So swinging back over here into the North Pacific and taking a look at the instantaneous wind power density, we can see why it's important because it contains a lot of information from the barometric equations that we showed in the, in the nice plot. And if we come over here and take a look at the Earth Null School panel, we can see that we actually have everything we need to calculate the instantaneous wind power density. Uh, for example, we have the pressure here in hectopascals going up. Um, we have the wind velocity. We also have the temperature going up at various layers levels in the atmosphere. And we also have the mean sea level pressure as well. So we have all the information that's needed to calculate the uh, instantaneous wind power density. And zooming out, we can get a sense of what the wind power density looks like on a, on a global scale. So for example, up here in you know, the subarctic region, we have these extratropical cyclones forming. These are weather patterns happening near the surface. And then as we go up in the atmosphere, a couple thousand meters, we can see that these structures get more broad wind structures. And then as we go up even further into the jet stream, we can see we have these very high wind power densities. And we can get a sense of how the jet stream relates to surface winds in terms of the actual amount of power or energy in the wind. It's also interesting to note that down here at the equator, for example, we don't really have any instantaneous wind power density. So this quantity also tells us a lot about the various structures that we have in the atmosphere and gives us information about how we might want to look at them in a different way. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on instantaneous wind power density in Earth Null School. If you did, please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to having you along in the next tutorial in which we'll talk a little bit more about convection and precipitation. Thanks for listening.